Hey, everybody. Good weekend. Here is your Market Minute for Sunday, the 23rd of July. Before I get to the charts, I want to let you know about the 2023 Derivatives Conference Futures and Options Trading. It is this Tuesday through Thursday, July 25th through the 27th. Starts at 10 a.m. every day, and it finishes up at 8 p.m. each day. Imagine that, 30 different market experts speaking. Attendance is free. So if you want to attend that, or just even sections of it, sign up for free at this link. Or probably the easier thing to do is to follow the link in this video's info section. So I actually present at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday the 25th. I hope to see you there. Before we get into the charts, I have to show you the movers this week. So we have an awful lot of market event risk this week. And let me point some of these out. So Monday and Tuesday aren't too bad. And we may, th these days may just sort of walk sideways with rising implied volatility because we have Wednesday, we have the FOMC event. So that's of course the market kind of goes to sleep in the morning and holds the volatility until 2 p.m. where the FOMC does the rate announcement. Everybody knows it's going to be just a quarter point rate hike. And the Fed chair press conference where we do get a little bit more information on that. Now, what happens is on Thursday, we get our first read on second quarter GDP. So this could be interesting. We know it's going to be positive, but how positive will it be? So again, everybody's been scared for, you know, the better part of the last year about us slipping into recession Will we see the GDP hold steady or will it start to slip? And then we get into jobless claims, which is going to remain more and more important these days because with the Fed raising rates constantly like this, what we're watching for is whether the job market will tip down and start to head lower. And the first way that we're going to see that is through jobless claims. So that's Thursday. And then we get on Friday... The infamous PCE, which is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. So this is going to mean an enormous amount. And we saw a big reaction last month to this number as it looked like inflation was cooling to the consumer and starting to turn down. So if that trend continues, it's going to be good for the market. If we see consumer inflation remains sticky, then this is going to have a negative impact in the market. So we could be thrashed about up to up and down this week. And that's nothing to say about the earnings that we have this week. We have on Tuesday after market close, Google and Microsoft and Visa. And then we have Boeing Aerospace, General Dynamics, Coke, AT&T, Union Pacific on Wednesday morning. We have Meta, on Wednesday afternoon after the Fed announcement. And then on Thursday, we have MasterCard, Valero, Amazon, Ford, Roku, US Steel in the afternoon. And then even on Friday morning, we have Procter & Gamble, ExxonMobil. So we have huge earnings on top of all the other market risk. This market is going to get thrashed around up and down, probably not going to be just a one-way freight train. It's going to see volatility up and down all week, overreacting to all of these various stimuli. Now, with that in mind, what are the charts saying? Well, the charts are showing that we've gone through an extended move to the upside, extremely linear. We have weekly exhaustion. This is close to a level where we typically see Markets stop trending in that direction, but definitely on the daily chart, we've run out of gas as well, too. So the most likely thing that we would see is probably some type of range bound choppy price action for the next week or maybe even two weeks would satisfy not only technical, but also would give the market plenty of room to overreact to the upside, overreact to the downside and basically revert back to the mean all while giving it a chance to basically acclimate itself to this altitude about 4,500 on the S&P. And I haven't even mentioned the NASDAQ, which is even more extreme in this condition, but we'll focus on the S&P for right now. So that's kind of the backdrop that we have for this week. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. It's going to be a lot of volatility, but probably 
we're going to be ending up the week about where we start. I think there's that's a that's a good chance that we're going to see just a lot of chop and a, not a whole lot of net progress one way or the other. That's today's Market Minute. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next one.